بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي صالحين ورب الطيبين وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم أجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين وبعد so we continue with our uh, lessons here in in Balham, which is again in the vicinity of Tooting, South London. And this is our second lesson in our lessons of uh, going through benefits of uh, our program in the Arabic language, al al Arabiya. And we said that our i'timad, our, we'll be relying upon book one, and we'll use that as a reference point, or uh, we'll be going through the lessons in detail from book one. But also we're going to be bringing a lot of benefits from al ajruniya We're going to bring a lot of benefits from al ajruniya which is again, a, it's a book in Nahu, in grammar, Arabic grammar, which the tulab al the students of knowledge, they usually begin with. Um, today, um, we have sheets in front of you, and we'll be um, putting some sheets online. So if you go on to the, those who are listening online, if you follow us on Twitter, you will see our first sheet being placed there now. And that sheet is to do with a, your, a personal dictionary. We're going to be talking about your personal dictionary. And that is on, on Twitter, has just arrived on Twitter now. And those who are here, in, in, in present in person, then they have the sheets in front of them. So to quickly look at what we're talking about in terms of your personal Dictionary, then making a personal dictionary, ya ikhwa wal akhawat, dear brothers and sisters, and this is something which is of great great benefit. It's very beneficial beneficial for a student to make their own dictionary. Because every word they come across, they'll be writing it out, they'll put in the meaning, and they'll use they'll put that word also in a sentence so they can memorize it in context. So it's not just words that are mere words that people are memorizing. Rather, they're memorizing the words and they're able to use it in sentences. The whole purpose is for you to learn Arabic and then implement that and use it on your, in your daily life. So for example, in the, an ex, uh, I've given you a sheet, I've made a little sheet here, of a way in which you can make your own dictionary. So in the first table, you have, for example, the harf ba, harf al ba, the letter ba. And the reason why I've given you an example of ba, because from the first words that come in the Medina book one, on the first page, is Beitun. On the first page we have Hada Beitun. This is a house. So Beitun, Beitun, you need to know the meaning of that word. What is Beitun? So you have a column here for the word. You write the word down in Arabic, Beitun. And then the next column, you write the translation, the meaning, into your language, the meaning in your language. So for example, we have Beitun meaning a home. And then you have, for example, if you wish to go into a little bit more detail, then you have the, the root verb. Where does Beitun come from? So for example, Beitun comes from the verb Bata Yabitu, for a person to spend a night or spend uh, a time, uh, stay, stay overnight somewhere. So Bata means, is the past tense, he stayed uh, a night or stayed overnight. And Yabitu is the present tense, he stays overnight. And then you have the, this word Beitun in an example sentence. So for example, we have هذا Beitun Kabirun. This is a big house. And we use these words here in this sentence, because these three words will come very soon in book one. هذا, meaning this, when we go into detail about this. And Beitun, a house, and Kabirun, describing the house as being big. So this is a big house. So you can, disc- you can use, you can make your dictionary in this form. So you have, uh, you can buy a notebook and maybe every five pages you write a letter or, or begin with every three pages. Or you can get a, a book which um, is a, fa- a, a file which you can put pages into. So you clip the pages into it. So you can add pages to that. Uh, and you can do it in this format. So Alif, you have a page for Alif, Ba, all the way up to Ya. Another easier way, if you don't, you know, sometimes it's a bit of an effort to look for the verb and the root verb. Uh, and 
In terms of verbs, going into detail about verbs, that will come in book two. Book one, the tarkiz, the concentration, is on the, the asma, the nouns. Okay, and some of the particles, like the verbs and what have you. So those who do not want to go through that manner, they might want to lose a column and just have the word, the translation, and the example in the sentence. Maybe that is more better for the mubtadi, the one who's really new to the language. So let, let, we ask the brothers and sisters to, to give that, make an effort, try and do that, and see how that aids and helps you. So for some it might be very helpful, for others it might be, they might want to take another route. But use that. Trial and error is something which a student should use. Trial this and see if it works for them. And remember, all these words that you make in your personal literature is words that you have come across. Means that these are words that is necessary for you to memorize. That's why it's good to have your own personal literature. Because every word that you use, every word that you put in there, is a word that you have come across. So it is, it's mandatory, it's necessary for you to memorize that. But as if you have a dictionary and you just go back to the dictionary, then you may not know that you came across that word. So sometimes you come across a word and then you come across the word maybe five, six pages later and you don't remember whether you memorized that or not or, that, or that's a new word or not. So you go back to the dictionary again and then you see the word and you say, oh, okay, you realize actually I did come across that word and what have you. There is a benefit, there is a way in which uh, you, can benefit, you can use a dictionary for your benefit. So what we used to do when we had a dictionary, if we came across a word, for example, Beitun, and we had to go to the dictionary, what's the meaning of Beitun? We go to the dictionary, and we place a grey dot with a pencil, a dot next to that word, to show that that word, I have actually gone to the dictionary for that word. And then maybe another, I don't know, um, 10 days, 20 days later, a month later, I come across the same word, Beitun, for example. And I don't know the meaning of it, I still don't, haven't memorized the meaning. So I go to the dictionary again, and I go to the dictionary, I see there's a grey dot there. Meaning that I have come across this word. So I put another grey dot, and maybe because I put two grey dots there, I'll extract that word and put it into my own dictionary, or put it into a notebook, and write it out maybe ten times. Because I've come across that twice, and this shows the importance of this word, so I have to memorize it now, and I have to make an effort. So there's ways in which you can do that as well. That's something that we have trialed also, whilst we were in Medina. So that, inshallah, that is your personal dictionary. Um, before we move on to uh, our, what we would like to go through today, which is speech in Arabic. Al-Kalam. We're going to be talking about speech. What is speech in Arabic? This is what will be our focus today. What is speech? Before we go into that, um, last week we were talking about some benefits about the Arabic language and some of the statements of the scholars. Um, I wanted to mention one last statement or one last uh, point. Uh, and I wasn't able to do that due to lack of time. I will do that now. And that is that the scholars have said, and Sheikh Saleh al uthaymini mentioned this in his explanation of al alfiya ibn Malik, page 18. Volume number one, page 18. He said that, that um, it is said that the first one to invent or to talk about Arabic grammar was someone called Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali. Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali. And this was in the time of the Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. In the time of Ali radiallahu an. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. When, and, the, the, and he talked, we talk, uh, the Shaykh, Shaykh Salah al-Thaymeen, Muhammad bin Salah al-Thaymeen, he mentions that Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali's daughter entered into, upon him, entered into a room where he was in. دَخْلَ عَلَىٰ إِبْنَتِهِ Or he entered a room where his daughter was present. She was lying down. And she was looking at the sky. وَإِلَىٰ الْمَصَابِيحِ فِي الدُّجَىٰ And she was looking at the stars in the sky. So she said, يَا أَبَتِي مَا أَحْسَنُ السَّمَاءِ يَا أَبَتِي مَا أَحْسَنُ وَفَدَّمَّ النُّنُونَ ما أحسن السماء with a kasra on the hamza. فأجابها. So her, so her father, she said, Oh my father, how beautiful is the sky? How, be how beautiful? This is what she meant. How beautiful is the sky? So he replied to her. He replied to her, نجومها. Huh? 
Najumuha, it stars. She meant to say, so I, she meant to say, how beautiful was the sky? But due to her making a grammatical mistake, she says, what made the sky, she said, what made the sky beautiful? What made the sky beautiful? The father replied, the, sc- the stars, it's stars. The stars made it beautiful. And the sheikh says, his answer was correct. Because her statement, مَا أَحْسَنُ sama, It means, what is it that makes the sky beautiful? Or what makes the sky brilliant? Because she used it in the right, correct, the grammatical sense, it was used incorrectly. So her father answered accordingly. And the shaykh says, her sh- shows that Abu al-Aswad al-Du'li gave importance to this statement of hers because she made a grammatical mistake and she, he answered with the meaning to what she said. So first of all, and I'm, gonna, I'm summarizing here, if a person was to say, مَا أَحْسَنُ السَّمَاءِ If a person was to say, مَا أَحْسَنُ السَّمَاءِ And I'm going to write this on the board. If a person was to say, مَا أَحْسَنُ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَحْسَنُ السَّمَاءِ Then this here is a question. Then this is a question. مَا أَحْسَنُ وَبَدَمَّ السَّمَاءِ وَبَكَسْرَ at the end. Then this is a question. نعم. As for ما أحسن السماء ما أحسن with a فتحة on the noon السماء with a فتحة on the حمزة then this is what we call a تعجب a person who is shown amazement so if a person says ما أحسن Asama'a meaning how amazing and beautiful is the sky. If a person was to say, Ma ahsanu asama'i, then this is a question. What makes the sky brilliant and excellent and beautiful? As for the third, Ma ah sana asama. With a dhamma at the end, then this means this is negation. This means the sky is not excellent, not beautiful. So just by changing case endings, it changes the whole meaning from being a question, what makes the sky excellent? Changing it to ta'ajjub, uh, changing it to amazement. How amazing is the sky, or how excellent is the sky? And also, moving to the sky is not excellent, or not beautiful. So just by the changing of case endings, it changes the meaning. <coughs> and we'll put this, inshallah, on Twitter, uh, ta'ala, for people to see. Inshallah, this is in written form. But just to show the the endings here, so we'll just highlight these endings here. Just to highlight those endings, and inshallah we'll type it out. Bidhan ta'ala also. Uh, I'll put it on Twitter to type it out, inshallah. So, he's fought the show that the father, Abu Aswad, yeah, he was teaching his daughter, indirectly teaching his daughter, grammar, and nahu. She was meant to say, how amazing and excellent is the sky. Because she was lying down, looking at the sky, looking at the stars. Now, But what she said was not what she meant. She said, what makes the sky excellent? And her father said, Nujumuha. It's stars. The stars is what makes it excellent and beautiful and amazing. 
So he was teaching a grammar, and they and this was the time of Ali, eh? an, Ali ibn Abi Talib, an, and this was from the they say from the first people invented or introduced Arabic grammar was Abu Aswad al Dua. Just wanted to mention that last week, and we wanted to make sure that we we wanted to mention last week. We weren't able. Just wanted to mention at the beginning of this week shows the importance of Arabic grammar, the importance of a nahu. Importance of a nahu. Now, okay, so we've talked about um, uh, in, the importance of having a, a, a dictionary. Now, some, some of you have learned some new words here. A summer being sky. Um, that can be added to a person's personal dictionary. It doesn't need to be from the book. It can be some words they hear from the, the teacher. Now, so every word you hear, try to write that down, then put that into your personal Dictionary. Now, and then your vocabulary, you will see your vocabulary, it will build. And I remember one of our, our older brothers, if I remember clearly, it was our elder, beloved brother, uh, Abu, Hik- Abu Hakim Bilal Davis. When I first arrived in Medina in 2002, he was leaving. He was leaving and his books were being packed away. And we visited him, me and a group of brothers, from them our elder and beloved brother, Abu Umar Farooq, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and others, we visited him in his house, and then we asked for some advice. And at that point, there was books being moved into a big container to be shipped back to England, his books, his library. And I remember he gave us some advice, and he mentioned, mentioned some lines of poetry. He said that, He said, Today, I mentioned lines of poetry, he said, Today is knowledge, and tomorrow, it's like it, knowledge like it. Meaning today you learn knowledge, and tomorrow you learn knowledge also. From the 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 flowers or the fruits of knowledge which you pick. Naam. A person gains by this knowledge wisdom. And indeed. A river, a flowing river, is nothing but drops from the sky. A flowing a river is nothing but drops from the sky. Meaning, when you first start to learn knowledge, you learn it in drops. You learn it in small amounts. But eventually, the more you take, the more you learn, then this drops, like the rain from the sky, eventually becomes a river. Eventually becomes a river. Meaning that you start to you attain a lot of it. So the what's the point is that the that our brother was making that you have to have patience and remember it's tadaruj. It's you, you, when it comes to seeking knowledge, it's step by step. You can't take all of knowledge all at once because the salaf they used to say that whoever takes uh, tries to take all of kullu, then he it goes from him kullu. It goes away. All of it goes away. You try to take everything all at once, it goes all at once. So some, that when we seek knowledge, it should be step by step. So this is why we, um, uh, we say that memorize the words as they come, step by step, and don't leave them all eh, to the end of the week or to the end of the month. Do it step by step. On a daily basis, you should be rising. Okay, let's go to the second the, the sheet, or what we want to concentrate on today. And that is speech. So brothers and sisters, you have a, sh- a sheet in front of you, and at the top it says speech and kalam. We'll be, intro- we'll be putting that on Twitter right now. So those who are following on MixLR. Those who are following on MixLR. If you, follow, if you go to Twitter, you'll see a sheet uh, being uh, attached now. Or being introduced on our Twitter feed now. ta'ala. And that is to do with speech. That's to do with speech. Naam. So what is speech? What is speech? Now the definition of speech, or the word for speech in Arabic first, is al-kalam. The word for speech in Arabic is al-kalam. Al-kalam. So what is the ta'rif though? What is the ta'rif? Naam, ma ma'na ta'rif? What's the meaning of ta'rif? Definition. Definition. So there on the sheet, on the second line, you have a ta'rif, it means definition. So now that you know that a ta'rif means definition, from the next lesson and so and from henceforth, I'll be saying ta'rif, expecting you to know that a ta'rif means definition. 
But as I said, I will every now and then still repeat that ta'rif means definition. Until la- later on, maybe 10, 5 lessons on, what have you, that I will be refraining from using the English words. Because we want you to start learning Arabic via Arabic. We want you to learn Arabic via Arabic, eventually. Naam. So what is the ta'rif, the definition of al-kalam? I'm going to read the Arabic definition. And this is taken from al ajrumiya This is taken from al ajrumiya so speech is al kalam huwa al lafz al huwa al lafz al murakkab al mufid bil wad'i let me repeat that and that is in front of you in the sheets al kalam speech is huwa al lafz number 1 al murakkab number 2 al mufid number 3 bil wad'i Number five. So, in summary, what does that mean? It means speech, according to the grammarians, the people who study the Arabic language, is spoken expression, love, consisting of two or more words, whether they'll be actual words or implied words. We'll, we'll talk about that. It is beneficial and free from any ambiguity. It's explicit. And the speaker, the one who's saying these words, he, the speaker says it purposefully, or he purposefully utters it in the medium of Arabic, meaning in the Arabic language. In the Arabic language. So, the first part of the definition, yeah, or al-kalam, al-murad. So, when we're, when we're talking, when we talk about kalam, we're talking, talking about it in, in according to the grammarians. So, this is definition. Is according to the grammarians, the people of the Arabic language who studied the Arabic language and grammar. So, a lafzu is a nutqu bil lisan. So, you can annotate this. Is to utter something upon the tongue. Is to utter something upon the tongue. So, uttering something upon the tongue. Spoken expression. Yeah? It is murakkab. It is murakkab. Meaning, it consists of two or more words. It consists of two or more words. Naam. So for example, if I was to say, Hada Baytun, which is one of the first sentences in book one. Hada Baytun. How many words are there? <coughs> ya Ikhwan. Two words. Hada Baytun. Two words. So, so far, I've spoken the sentence. Hada Baytun. So, so far, it, yes, so far this is speech, according to the definition. Hada Baytun consists of two or more words. So, it's still, to this point, it agrees with the definition. This is a house. Number three. It is, or na'am. Number three, or number four, it is. أفاد السامع بحيث لا يتشوف بعده إلى غيره. It benefits the one who is listening. The one who is listening, he gains benefit, and he is not anticipating and waiting for some more speech huh, to complete the sentence. What I mean by this, for example, for example, if I was to say to you. The door. If I just come into this clo- this room, and I'll just say to you, the door. Many of you will know that I've said two words: the door. Naam. But we're not going to look at this in the uh, Arabic sense. We're just going to look at English first. Let's understand this in English. If I said to you, the door, many of you will be thinking, okay, what about the door? Naam. They'll be they're waiting for something. They're thinking that I'm gonna I need to finish off. You are anticipating something else to this to talk about, to explain, or to finish the sentence. You're thinking in your minds, okay, the door, okay, the door. What about the door? Are you going to be talking about the color? Is it open? Huh? Which door are you talking? The door to the house? The door to the room? You're anticipating and waiting for something to finish it off. So therefore, my speech, the door, is not beneficial. My speech, the door, is not beneficial. Because... You are waiting 
for something to finish off the sentence. You're waiting for something. You're, you're anticipating something to finish to make this complete or beneficial. So if I were just to say the door, then this is not speech. This is not speech yet. But if I was to say to you in English, the door is open. The door is open. You are not ant- waiting for anything else to finish it off. You're not anticipating for me to say something else. That is a complete beneficial sentence. The door is open. Okay, yes, you're right, sir. You're right. Yeah, sir, this is, the door is open. Beneficial. If we look at now the Arabic and we say, for example, if we were to say, Hal. This is an example with Sheikh Uthaymin, Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin. He mentions, if a person was just to say, Hal. This is, Hal is used to ask this question. Hal. And I stay there. And I don't mention anything after that. The listener, the Sami, the listener, he is waiting and he is anticipating something to come after it. A question to come. So, hal by itself is not speech because it's not beneficial. The listener is still anticipating and waiting for something to complete it, to make it beneficial. But if I was to say, hal Muhammadun mawjood? Is Muhammad present? Then there is speech. Then this is speech because it has been completed. It is beneficial now. And the listener is not waiting and anticipating for something else. No. Is Hal Muhammadun Mawjood? Is Muhammad present? Yeah? So that is speech. It's beneficial. So what is meant from the definition, Al Mufid? That when the listener hears this speech, he hears it and he's not yet a show He's not anticipating. Or expecting anything else to come after it. It's complete. That's number four. And number five, Bil Wadr. Bil Wadr. That the speaker, he purposefully utters it in the medium of Arabic. So that it has to be a, that it has to be first number, the person has to purposefully utter the statement. Yeah? He, and he's, he purposely utters this statement. And the Shaykh, he mentions this and explains this. That means that the person is not drunk. He is not, huh? there's not kalam or sukran. It's not the speech of a drunken person. So a, the, the, pers- the speech of a drunken person in Arabic is not considered speech. Huh? It's, been, it's considered someone spe- uttering nonsense. No? He's not speaking his mind. He is not purposely saying, he's not, he's not saying that speech purposely. He's just uttering it and he's lost his senses. So that person, that is not considered speech. No? So he has to, has to purposely have uttered that speech. And the Shaykh said, also, also it's not the speech of a majnoon. A person who is majnoon, insane. Yeah? That insane person. Yeah? Then that is not considered also speech. No? As for I know the person who is naim. Yes, there are people who sleep talk. They sleep walk and they sleep talk. Naam. So if the person is talking in his sleep, then that is not considered speech. Because not the person does not mean. He's not he has he's not purposely saying those state words. Huh? He does not know what he's saying. If you used to wake him up and you said you said this, he said, Did I? Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. No? I didn't that was not my purpose. That was not my cast. So that a an yakun al wadi'u lahu qasidan wad'u. He is qasid. He is purpose. He has a purpose. He's purposely uttering those words. Okay. So does everyone understand the first part? Was meant by bil wad'u. Mean that person has to say it purposely. The second part of the definition of al wad'u is that it has to be in Arabic. Has to be uttered in Arabic. So me speaking now, presently to you, everyone here. I am, in, according to the grammarians, I am not, it's not speech. According to the grammarians, this is not speech. In the, the grammarians of the Arabic language. Uh, but as soon as I, antaqilu ila al-lughut al-arabiyya, wa atakalamu bil-lughut al-arabiyya, faqat, 
أصبح أصبح كلامي أو أصبح ما أنتقو كلاما. so that that which I say now is considered speech because I've been speaking in Arabic and I'm purposely saying. so just to summary then speech in Arabic according to the grammarians is spoken expression. You utter it with your tongue. And by saying that, then that eliminates writing. So, writing, if you were to write something down, if you were to write, هَذَا كِتَابٌ That is not considered speech. Okay? According to the grammarians. If you were to, or an ishara, if you used to sign language, if you used to sign, or if I was to say, or not say, but I, I used to, I, I indicate with my hand, a person is standing and I say, I point down. I'm trying to tell him to Idris, sit down. Me pointing at him to sit down, that pointing and that sign language, that's not considered speech. It has to be anutqo bin lisan. has to be uttered upon the tongue for it to be speech. Okay? So that eliminates sign language, eliminates um, writing. Okay? What we mean by um, it has to be spoken expression. Consisted of two or more words, actual words. For example, هذا كتاب. Yeah, two words. <coughs> or something implied, what we call تقدير, implied. For example, um, um, for example, مثلا um, um, اقرأ. Yeah? The word, the word اقرأ, read. Yeah? read. What there is a hidden pronoun here. There is a hidden pronoun here, which is you. Yeah? You read. You read. So the this the, the, it, when we mean by two or word two or more words, it could be actual words or implied. So when I say, for example, Iqra, read, or the Sheikh says, for example, an example which the Sheikh mentions. Um, Nah. Uh, for example, Mathalan Qum. Yeah? For example, Qum. Qama Zaid. Zaid stood up. Yeah? Two words. That is speech. Or Qum. Stand up. Yeah? Meaning you stand up. Then that also is also speech. Because there is a hidden pronoun, and later on in book two we'll talk about that. So it can be two or more, two or more words, actual words or implied words. Naam. And going on, it is beneficial and free from ambiguity. So it's beneficial that a person makes that sp- that statement or speaks, and that listener is not anticipating anything else. Naam. And it is purposefully uttered in the medium of Arabic. Is there any questions regarding the definition of speech? Any questions regarding the definition of speech? Naam, Akhil Kareem. What was the meaning of this love? Okay, love means um, uh, words, a love or a suffix which is uttered. Eh? So, love is suffix which is uttered or words. Naam. Um, so, naam, love. Alfaz, words, love, a word, suffix which you say. Suffix which you say. A love. Okay, now, let's move on now. So that's that sheet done. So that's the meaning of kalam. Now that you know the definition, the ta'rif of kalam, then kalam, ayyuhul ikhwa wal akhawat, their brothers and sisters, um, we're going to put this on Twitter now. And that is types of speech. In front of you, you have a sheet saying aqsamul kalam. Aqsam, types. Al kalam, aqsamul kalam, types of speech. Types of speech. And this will be uh, on Twitter. I think it is there now. And we have... Kalam can be sp- is of three. Kalam can be split, is split into three. So whenever a person speaks in Arabic, when he utters and speaks, it falls into these three categories. Speech falls into these three categories. Category one is Asma'un. Nouns, asma, nouns, and book one, Medina book one, the focus of this book is asma. The focus of this book 
is nouns. For indeed, when it comes to verbs, there's only maybe around five or six verbs mentioned in this book. Less than ten verbs in this book. Less than ten verbs in this book. Okay? So the focus is nouns and uh, particles. We're going to come to that. So, asma, nouns. In English, um, nouns, or if you look at type, the nouns can also be categorized. You can have uh, an ismun, so a normal noun, yeah? Damir, a pronoun. Number three, a na'at, an adjective, falls underneath a noun, a describing word. A dharf, an adverb, and adverbs are, can be adverbs of place, yeah? For example, under, yeah? Something being under, tahta, fawqa, above, is showing you where something is placed, or the place of something, na'am. Uh, it can also, dharf, an adverb, can be of time. So, qabla, before, ba'da. So, I went to, uh, I qara'tu al-Quran, I read the Quran, ba'da al-Fajr, after Fajr, showing a time. When was the time you read uh, Quran? So, this is an adverb of time. So, dharf means adverb, and that, that's the two types. We'll, come into, we'll talk about that in detail as we go on through the book. And also, number five, now. You can have an ism fi'l. Yeah, ism fi'l, an interjection. Um, an interjection is when, um, in English, is when um, you make an expression, all of a sudden, like an expression, a sound. For example, ah, huh? ah, hey. Yeah, someone done, someone nudge, uh, uh, someone uh, barged you, for example, yeah? uh, accidentally yeah? uh, rubbed shoulders with you. And you say, hey, that's an uh, interjection. Yeah? You're interjecting. Yeah? In Arabic, for example, um, uh, ma, yeah? sa, yeah? we have interjections. Yeah? May, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, to listen and what have you. There's different types of interjections in Arabic. So this is what we call an ism fi'l. Yeah? So that, those come out under nouns. So when a person speaks yeah? and then uses adjectives and nouns and what have you, this is a type of speech. Okay? This is a type of speech. And that comes under... Asma'un, nouns. Number two, the second type of speech is af'alun, verbs. Af'al, okay, verbs. Yeah? So, uh, and that comes, so we have the example number six, fi'lun. So a verb, yeah, whenever you uh, describe an action, then this is a fi'l. So, zahaba, um, he went. Daraba, he hit. Akala, he ate. Uh, um, Raja'a, he returned. These are all actions. These are all af'al. So when a person talks about action, then that comes under af'al. Okay, af'al, verbs. Then the third type of speech is huruf, <coughs> is particles. And examples of that is harfudar, the prepositions. So for example, uh, the book uh, is in the drawer, in, yeah? The book is in the drawer. Um, I went, to ila Pakistan. I went to Pakistan, eh? Pakistan, to be in a preposition. And then you also have under this category, harfu atf, harf atf. So conjunction, conjunctions, like and, yeah? Uh, myself uh, and Muhammad went to. Yeah, the shop. Anna wa Muhammad. We went. The habna. Anna wa Muhammad. The habna ila, um, for example, ila dukan to the shop. So this is particles. So to sum up, then, when a person speaks, whatever he says, it falls in. It comes. It falls under these three categories: asma nouns, which is the plural. Plural of Asma is the plural of Ism. Is the plural of Ismun. Okay? So Ismun means noun. Yes, you're gonna later know that yeah, Ismun can also mean name. But in the grammatical sense, Ismun means noun. So Ismun, noun, asma un nouns, the plural. Okay? And then we have also the second type of speech is af'al, and the singular of af'al is fi'lun. Yeah? 
And then we have huruf, particles, and the singular is harfun, particle. That can also mean letter. Eh? Letters. Huruf can also mean letters. Yeah? Harf can also mean letter. When this is in the grammatical sense, terminology, it means particle. Okay? So that is speech. Speech is of three categories. Speech is of three categories. Naam? So, asma'un, af'alun, and huruf. Now, why are we mentioning these things? And you're going to see, we're going to, before we get in the book, we're going to mention also the, how to say singular, the word for singular, dual, plural. Talking about the dual. We're going to also talk about definite, indefinite. We're going to introduce some definitions before we go into the book. Because when we do mention it during a book, you have some khalfiya. You have some background. Huh? You have some background going into it. And that's why I suggest, just like I told you that you should make your own personal dictionary, you should also make your own personal um, terminology book. Make your own personally, personal terminology book. Yeah? Kitab al Yeah? Book of terminologies. Yeah? Because um, when you go into deep into Arabic and you start to learn al and you start to look at the books of tafsir, and you start to look at ahadith and explanations and the books of the ulama, they will be using these terminologies. They will be using these terminologies. So it's upon you to know the, the meaning in Arabic. Because as we go on, these are the words that are going to be using in the books eh, that you'll be reading in the in future. So we would like to introduce these and give it its right. Rather than, as we go through the lesson, mention it real quickly and move on. We like to give it right. And remember, we said that this course is a course that we're going to be doing nice, in a bil buti or bati and slowly. What bit ta'anni? Yeah, yeah. We're going to be taking this, taking our time with the Taala. So, what have we done? What have we spoken about today? Today we have spoken about that um, the origins of Arabic language. They say, like Sheikh Muhammad bin Salah al Taymi, he mentions that from the first people who introduced grammar. Or invented it, if you want to, if you want to say, it's from who is was who? Naam. Abu al-Aswad, yeah. Abu al-Aswad al-Duali. Naam. Okay. Now, um, what happened? What was the qissa? What happened with him? And uh, what was the actual? How do we know that uh, he was from the first people to talk about Arabic grammar? And you can mention that, summarize that for me. Naam. A conversation with his daughter, and what was his daughter uh, saying? Or what did she mention? Um, you have, have to be detailed, just give me a gist. So she was lying down, uh, admiring the beauty of the sky and the stars, and she said and made a statement, which she meant to say was, how beautiful, in amazement, how beautiful are the, is the sky. But she said, eh, what makes the sky excellent or beautiful? Yeah? Her father replied and said, the stars. It's stars. The stars is what makes it excellent and beautiful. But he, only, he replied to something she said. Yeah? And then we mentioned that, that that statement, by changing the case ending, it can change it from the meaning of to, from a question to show an amazement, ta'ajub, to show in. What? Negation. And the sky is not excellent, not beautiful. So, that's the first thing we started off. We also mentioned a benefit. We ask you to uh, make your own dictionary. We ask you to make your own dictionary. Now, and uh, we gave you examples where you can have four columns. Word, translation, root verb, and example in a sentence. Or you can make it more simpler, simplify it a bit more. And you can have the word, the translation of the word, and an example of a sentence. The example is very important, Ikhwan. Because you want to be able to, not, you're not memorizing a word, just to know the word. You're memorizing a word, na'am, to understand it, but also to be, use it, implement it. Yeah? Use it. Na'am. And then we also mentioned, we went on to give the definition of speech. And we said speech is, according to the grammarians, is, uh, it's spoken, it's not written, and it's not via um, body language or sign language. It's spoken expression. 
and it consists of two or more words. These two or more words can be actual words. Words that you actually can count. Naam, hadha kitabun. This is a book. Hadha, one. Kitabun, two. Two words. Naam. Or it can be um, implied that it's two or more words. So for example, qum. Stand up. The order. Qum. There is a hidden, ver- hidden pronoun here. The hidden pronoun is you. You stand up. So that, the implica- the, what is implied, you stand up. So that shows that it's two or more words. It's implied two words or more. Now, it's, there, it's a beneficial, speech is beneficial. So much so that it does not leave any ambiguity. It does not leave the listener waiting and anticipating anything else. So, when the, sp- when the person says that the door is open, then this is a beneficial statement. The listener is not anticipating or waiting or expecting anything else. But if you were to say the door, al the door, then the person, the listener is thinking and thinking to himself, what about the door? Give me some more information about the door. Give me an adjective. Give me a khabar. Eh? Give me something to uh, finish the sentence. Yes? So that shows that it's not beneficial. So it has to be beneficial. Leaving the listener with no ambiguity and not waiting or anticipating, in anticipating any ever expression or any completion of the sentence. And this person who is speaking with this kalam, the speech, it has to be purposely uttered. So you are not drunk, a person who is drunk who says some statements and some words. He, is, he does not mean to say a lot of those words. Yeah? So that's not speech. Or the person who is uh, lost his sanity, he's majnoon, he's crazy. Then that person who speaks from insanity, then that, that is not speech. And also the one who spe- sleep, uh, sleep talks, he's naim. Yeah? He speaks in his talk, uh, talks in his, <laughs> talks in his speak, speech. Huh? <laughs> talks in his sleep. What's huh? <laughs> Huh? What I'm saying is not speech anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, this person, he talks in his sleep. That is not speech. Because he does not, he's not, he didn't purposely want to say those words. And that which he says has to be in the Arabic language. Has to be in the Arabic language. So a person who can speak for an hour in French, according to the Arabic grammarians, that there is not considered speech. In, Ar- in Arabic, according to Arabic, eh? grammarians. So we talked about that, and we gave you the definition of speech. Now, then we gave you the type of speech, so everyone, whenever speaks, a person utters uh, words, sentences, paragraphs, and what have you, yeah? gives, a, con- uh, gives a, a, a speech, a sermon, then that which he says falls into three categories. There are nouns, asma, which he is uttering in that speech. There are af'al, verbs, which he's uttering in that speech. And there are also huruf, particles, which he's uttering in that speech. So the speech can be split into three categories. And, and that is what we, uh, our, this is the purpose of what we, want to, the, what we wanted to do. That was our learning objectives that we had in mind. Um, and inshallah, we ask the brothers and sisters who are present, and those who are listening online, we, we request from you to revise. We request from you a muraji'a revision. We request from you muraji'a revision. For indeed, um, not everyone here is half of. Not everyone here is like Imam Shafi'i. Eh? And uh, from the Salaf, who, who, who memorized everything they heard. Eh? Unfortunately, we've gone past that time. To give us that quwa fil hafida and in our dhakira we also give us the strength in our memory um, like he gave the strength to the salaf in their memory but we they also revised they also revised and this muraja and there's chapters of this in the books of in of revision and how they used to revise so much so they will be revising after Isha and they were engrossed in their revision until they heard the adhan of fajr until they heard the adhan of fajr this is how they used to revise. So revision is important. To so revise over the terminology. 
revise the words that we have uh, come, uh, we have come across because I'll be testing you. Let's listen on some terminology, and I'll be testing you on some um, of the words. Now the sisters will be thinking, oh, we want to be tested also. So this test will be in a, a paper I'll give at the beginning of the lesson, five minutes before the lesson starts. Five minutes, five minutes before the lesson starts. Have some brief questions. We'd like you just to fill, fill that in with that ta'ala, uh, before the lesson. So try to get here early. We'll put that on, the, on Twitter, in the ta'ala, five or ten minutes before the lesson begins. And some questions. So, for example, um, um, what is the definition of uh, speech? Um, mention uh, three, the three categories of speech, for example. Um, what does a sami' mean? Huh? So those who have been writing down, those who really got into detail. What does the sami' mean? Huh? What does that mean? What does um, uh, a nutq mean? Maybe some words like this. We might we test you real quickly. So please, make sure you revise. Don't leave it to the last minute. Revise on a daily basis. Barakallahu feekum. Wafaqakum Allah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وبارك الله فيكم إخوان remember the lessons these are free lessons but we do have to pay for these rooms and we do have to pay or we use ink to print out these worksheets نعم so please donate you know as much as you can our also on our Twitter or on our نعم Twitter if you look for our tweet you'll see that you can donate uh, via PayPal and what have you, you can donate to our account. So please donate as much as you can. Uh, and this is not something which is mandatory for your lessons for everyone, but just to help us continue these lessons, to continue to rent out the rooms, to continue to cater for the community. Uh, uh, we need to. Uh, we need your. Uh,